This is the new Honor 90 model that I've had for two weeks now. In fact, a little bit over that. I've been using it as my main phone. I even went on a trip up north, about 900 kilometers away from where I'm based. And I'll be using a lot of those photo examples you see in this video of the camera performance. And what can you expect out of the 200 megapixel main camera it does have, the 12 megapixel ultra wide and its 50 megapixel selfie. Now the screen, it is different here because it sets itself apart from the rest of the phones that I've been covering and reviewing with its very high pulse width modulation rate, which is 3840 hertz. And what this translates into is a phone that has an AMOLED screen, 6.7 inches, 120 hertz, with no flicker whatsoever. If you're someone that's susceptible to that pulse width modulation flicker, well, I can tell you now, you're not gonna see anything with such a high rate here. I don't detect any flicker whatsoever, even at the lowest brightnesses. So it is powered by the Snapdragon 7 Gen 1 Accelerated Edition. My model here has got 12 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. So this is what is included with our Honor 90. We have our charging cables, so Type A to Type C. The 66 watt charger, I'll let you know later on in the video the exact charge times I can get. And they include this clear TPU case. What is off camera is the SIM tray tool. Phone's build quality is very good, and the weight, I like how it's just 183 grams, with a lot of phones being over 200 grams, and the thickness is also very good. This is 7.8 millimeters. This frame, however, around the outside, it is plastic. Now, some people may believe that it's metal, but no, it's just this chrome style finish to the plastic. The giveaway is there's no antenna lines, and when you do look at our Type-C port, you'll see that clearly it is plastic. So we've got a downwards firing speaker here, microphone, this Type-C port does not support video out, and our SIM tray takes two nano SIMs. It does not have micro SD card support with it. Up the top, there is just a microphone, and our camera's on the rear here. So we've got a 12 megapixel ultra wide, two megapixel camera for depth. This is our flash right here, and very reflective the back of it. Now they do have this texture, a little hard to see. Uh, you can just see it now on the back of the glass, which is a nice touch here. And then the main camera, that is a 200 megapixel sensor, which sadly does not have optical image stabilization, which I believe is quite a bit of an oversight on their part. It would definitely help out the low light performance, as you'll see later on in this review. Power button and volume up and down. These are made out of metal, at least they do feel like metal to me, despite the plastic frame. Now the location of that power button is in an excellent position, so I don't have any problems tapping that. The fingerprint reader is a little bit low, as you can see. I'd ideally like it to be about here, which is a bit more comfortable, but it's down the bottom but it works really well. I've had no problems with this fingerprint reader. It seems to work 10 out of 10 times for me, which is the best thing that, of course, you want with a fingerprint reader. You don't want it to be unreliable. It's definitely reliable, this one. So we have a screen that is 6.7 inches, and what's special about it is it does have a very high pulse width modulation. So the dimming frequency is 3,840. It peaks up to 1,600 nits, and in direct sunlight, you can see this screen just fine, no issues with it. Now with that super high pulse width modulation, uh, that dimming frequency, you can't see any flicker, no matter what brightness I use. So if I use a very low brightness, you see that it's absolutely solid. There is no flicker present at all. And that screen does dim down really nice and dim, which I can't say the same for some other brands which tend to use a reasonably high brightness for the lowest brightness setting. So we've got curved glass here around the edges and it does feel good. Now the cutout here for the front facing camera, which is 50 megapixels, is just the hole punch style there, which is pretty typical. And I don't find that intrusive. And I do like the fact that it is right in the middle, not to one side. So the battery capacity within this is 5,000 milliamp hours, which is very good considering how thin it is and the weight we've got with this mobile. I guess them using the plastic frame did help bring that weight down. So just a few more things on this display, which I really do find fantastic, especially the lack of flicker. There's no flicker that you'll see with it at all. So having a look at some real world images, very good. The touch response is also excellent. I have not had any issues with it all. This is a top tier display. It really is great. And it's at flagship level, even though this really is a mid-range phone that we do have. So under the settings here for display, just go on and show you that, that we've got your typical options, okay? So you do have your uh, eye care, for example, ebook mode, you can adjust the scaling to as well, the display size, and that refresh rate. So 120 hertz, I've forced it 
onto that, or actually, no, it's not at the moment. It's on dynamic. I'm lying here. But before, I've been using it most of the time on high because after all, that is what uh, you are paying for when you get the phone. So I recommend to use that. And all my tests later on, I'll show you. They were all done with 120 hertz. So there's plenty of options on here, which is great. And you can adjust the color temperature, which is what I love to see with any displays. So my model here I've got has 12 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. So it is the top model here that I've got that Honor did send out to me to review. Now it's running Magic OS 7.1 based on Android 13 and you get the toggles and your notifications all there in one and it is working really fast. I have not experienced any lags, any problems, any issues at all with it. There's no bugs. General performance does seem to be really good. And great and it really feels more like a snapdragon 8 gen 1 the performance to me that is just using it day-to-day -day tasks here so i've had it now for two weeks I'm using it and i do find that the os is great now when you first get it you will notice a couple of things is that when you do first power it on you get quite a bit of bloat where here you can see so facebook booking.com TikTok, there's games and top apps they recommend but that's easy enough to remove and I really wish they wouldn't do this, but there are, of course, just a few things that are pre-installed. It's not too bad compared to some brands, which can be super heavy with the amount of extra apps, the bloat that they do install. So at the time of me producing this video here, the review that it's on the latest firmware, there has not been a firmware update for me. So the charge time here, this is me just testing it out for the 5,000 milliamp hour battery, although it does state here, uh, with this application, this is using Antutu, that's 4,900 milliamp hours, which it might typically be, it really depends. So it took 44 minutes to charge it at the 66 watts. So anything that's under an hour in my book is still very good. It's not the fastest out there, but still decent speeds. Antutu score, this is very good. So the Snapdragon 7 Gen 1 Accelerated Edition, good performance here. It does not feel slow. As mentioned, it feels more like a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. It's pretty quick and snappy. No real complaints. You can see the GPU performance is falling behind the CPU a little bit. If you're into your benchmarks here, but you're not really going to notice that because it can play all the games out there and I'll do a gaming test later on. So they do have a vapor chamber in this. The cooling is very good. You can see it does not throttle at all. I mean, well, zero 0.5%. That was it. That's all it throttled down in this very demanding test here with Wildlife Extreme. So this is stressing it out for 20 minutes and the performance did not drop off. Thermals were good. It did increase from 26 degrees Celsius. This is the chipset up to 36. That's pretty standard and it gets a little warm around this area, but nothing alarming. It really does not throttle. So it gets a big thumbs up there for the thermal performance, not throttling like some other models do. Now the battery life, you are looking at, if you're forced, forcing it on to 120 hertz, about seven and a half hours a screen on time. So with this test here, I got close to seven. That again is at 120 hertz. So the battery life is okay. It's nothing amazing. And considering the fact it's 5,000 milliamp hour battery, I think it does all right. Now, if you use the dynamic refresh rate, you can extend this quite a bit. Remember I had it forced to 120 hertz, but if you run 60 hertz or the dynamic option, then expect to get better battery life than my results here. Now, Honor, with their loudspeakers, they've only got one down the bottom. We've seen this before with some of their other models, and they just don't seem to want to use the dual loudspeaker setup, which, of course, does sound better because you'd have sound coming out of the earpiece as well. So it's just down below. For a single speaker, it sounds okay, but yes, it really should have dual stereo loudspeakers. So here's a sample of it at 100% uh, volume. Been my first Snapdragon 7 Gen 1 accelerated version mobile I'm testing out. Gaming performance, Genshin Impact on the absolute top setting, set to 60 frames per second. It does run really well. Now, when I first get into the levels, loading in the areas, you'll notice when you look around that it feels a little bit choppy, a little bit laggy. Thankfully, that does settle down and the game is super playable, very good performance, but it doesn't feel quite Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 level. It feels more like a Snapdragon 870 when it comes to the gaming performance with our GPU's performance, but it's good. It can play all the games that are in there in the Play Store without any problems at all, even on the maximum settings like Genshin Impact right here. Moving over to the camera, so this is our front facing camera, 4K 30 frames per second, no 4K 60. And you'll notice that it's a little bit overexposed here, these clouds. So the exposure has been tweaked up a little bit, uh, I wish it was a bit better there. 
but overall not bad quality. It does have electronic image stabilization and unlike many other phones, we do have that 4K with the front facing camera. Main 200 megapixel sensor now, so it does not have any optical image stabilization. This is all electronic for video and we do have some limitations with the video. And that is that there's 15 minutes record time limit for 4K and we cannot shoot 4K 60, only 4K 30. Now I can swap over to the ultra wide and then that main 200 megapixel camera. Commenting a little bit on that camera performance. So the daytime stills look very good. Portraits are fine. Ultra wide is okay. I wouldn't say it's the strength of it. The weakness though of the set of cameras with the 200 megapixel camera especially is the, the fact that it doesn't have any optical image stabilization. This means the low light photos don't look as good as they could really be. If it had the optical image stabilization, it would remove some of the tremors, help cut down on the blur of those photos, and they would be able to use a longer shutter rate or exposure time too, just to capture that light a little bit better. So that's a bit of a weakness is the low light performance. Another weakness of this phone is the fact that it just has a single downwards firing speaker here and not the dual loudspeaker setups that we often see with other phones. And I am missing that. I think it really should have it and it's a shame that it does not have it at all. And then the battery life, 5,000 milliamp hours. If you run and force 120 hertz, as I showed you, you're looking at about seven hours of screen on time. If you use a dynamic refresh rate, then about eight hours of screen on time, which is pretty good. The 66 watt charging fully charges in around 40 minutes or so. Slightly over that was what I got with my test of 44 minutes, uh, but not bad. Anything that's over an, under an hour, sorry, is I think acceptable and good there in my books. The big one that I really do like about it is the screen. It's fantastic, flicker free, very bright. It looks sharp. So it's a very good screen that is flagship level. The chipset, that Snapdragon 7 Gen 1, performs really well. Graphics performance isn't quite that of a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, but this 7 Gen 1 Accelerated Edition still did game really well and it's all overall a good chipset. It feels a little bit like a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 just in the UI performance, but when it comes to gaming, more like a Snapdragon 8 700, sorry, 870 is what it feels like a little bit there, but still really good performance from the chipset. I like the weight, the size of it, and the build quality is very good, even though yes, it does have a plastic frame. It's nice to have a phone that's a little bit thinner than the flagships and a little lighter there. So that's the full story there of the Honor 90 after my two weeks of using this as my full-time main phone and taking it on my trip up north about 900 kilometers away in Santander is where a lot of those photos were taken in that area, really beautiful Cantabria part of Spain.